Come on, serious suggestions, please. I'm not trying to write a thriller here. It's supposed to be an essay, you understand? An essay. That means facts and logic. Well, if it's facts and logic you're after, you shot yourself in the foot with your choice of research topic, didn't you? The Tatar is soon a mystery. When so much remains unexplained, there's little to be objective about. Unless, of course, you restrict yourself to textual criticism. Yeah, well, this is my teacher's area of research. I can't change that. But it's fascinating enough without having to sensationalize it, don't you think? The strange location, the missing details, a mysterious person? I want to write my essay on something interesting, and I'm interested in getting to the bottom of all this. That's the only reason I came to you. Yes, you came to me. So all the more reason to take my advice. The fact is, it's the dramatization that will make people want to read it. There's no getting around that. Uh, okay, but... Did one of them just mention Tatarasuna? But that's all the way in Inazuma! Is it just Paimon, or is it kinda unusual for someone in Sumeru to want to write a paper about that? Ugh. Everyone here is just going about their business. Maybe it really is just Paimon. Guess people here are free to research pretty much anything. Great! Let's go find out what this Tatarasuna mystery is all about. Alright, I guess I'll go with my textual criticism and your editorial direction for the first draft. I have a feeling that the missing Kabuki Mono will end up being the main focus of this paper. Ugh, if only we knew where to find that traveler. From what they say about her, this seems like the kind of thing she'd know about. Oh, you're the traveler, you say? Hmm. Hey, what's with that? Don't believe us? No, no. Of course I believe you. Actually, I first heard about your great exploits when I was still in Inazuma. This is my first time coming face to face with you and your mysterious silver-haired companion. I couldn't believe my luck, and out of force of habit I started... uh... examining the evidence. Sorry. Oh, so what, for the love of... <laughs> Sorry, we don't get out much, so our social skills are kind of lacking. Uh, Traveler, I hear you've helped many people a great deal and been to many places. Would you be able to tell us about Tatarasuna? Actually, we don't know much about that place either. In fact, we only came over here because we heard you talking about it and wanted to learn more. Ah, uh, uh, I see. My teacher chose this area of research as a personal challenge. He said it's difficult to get into because even Inazumans don't know much about Tatarasuna's past. But who'd have thought that... Uh... If you don't mind, I'd love to show you all my outline for the book I'm writing about Tatarasuna. Uh, hold on, Sawada. Don't you think that's a bit of a deep dive for a first read? Well, fair point. In that case, please ease yourselves in gently by taking a look at Akaba's latest essay draft. Let me give you some background. This all started with the discovery of some records in Tatarasuna. The writings mentioned someone by the name of Mikoshi Nagamasa, who crafted a fine blade. But in the end, he threw it into a fire to destroy it, and killed his servant Katsuragi. Why? Well, no one knows. Apart from the swordmaker, his servant, and the one who wrote this all down, the records also mention a kabuki mono. This seems to be an Inazuman word for an eccentric stranger, someone who dresses funny or acts in an unusual way. That's right. Akaba's teacher has spent quite some time researching these events on the ground. This kabuki mono lived in Tatara Suna for a while before disappearing without a trace, and shortly afterwards, as Akaba mentioned, 
things got pretty ugly. So first this strange person goes missing, then a murder happens? Hmm, seems kind of fishy to Paimon. Yes, my thoughts exactly. So I helped out too. I asked everyone I could think of if they knew anything about what happened back then. And wow, did I get lucky! Stop shouting! This part's important. I just wanted to make it stand out. It just so happens that a friend of mine works at the government records office. He looked into it for me, and I can now confirm that all the aforementioned individuals did, in fact, live in Inazuma over 400 years ago. Even back then, Tatara Suna was already at the centre of Inazuma's smelting industry. The man in charge was a government official named Niwa. Curiously enough, it seems like he went missing too. Wait, so there are two missing people in the story now? That's right! What's more, Niwa is a name with a lot of history to it. Have you ever heard of the great swordsmith clans of Inazuma? Oh! The swordsmiths? Yeah, um, like Ishin art and so on? Wow, yes. You really know your stuff. That makes things easier. So, basically, this Niwa was a distant relative of the Kaidahara clan, the last practitioners of Ishin art. Something then seems to have happened in the Kaidahara clan, leading to their downfall. I don't know the details, but taken in light of everything else going on around that time, it makes you wonder whether it's all connected somehow. The Kaidahara clan? Sawada, you left out the biggest detail of all! Oh, yes! Of course! How could I forget? Brace your minds, ladies and gents, for they are about to be blown. Or maybe you won't believe your ears. I wouldn't blame you, of course, because in all my years as a writer, this is by far the most... Get to the point, for Pete's sake! According to information acquired by Akaba's teacher, the Kabuki Mono was not a human, but a puppet. A puppet? Aha! Judging by the looks on your faces, you do know something after all. <laughs> uh, no! Paimon just meant... Uh, <laughs> how creepy! The way you described it makes it sound like a ghost story. I agree, it does. But considering that non-human races in Inazuma are by no means uncommon, spooky events are to be expected. And that's exactly what my book is about. Please, take a look! Oh, and please read my essay draft as well.
Sawada was encouraging me to follow his more creative approach, but I think essays should be grounded in facts. I don't think explaining everything away with mysterious forces will cut it. Oh, how about if I plug the holes in Sawana's narrative with political intrigue? Like, um, I could put a turf war between rival factions at the center of the whole series of events. Wait, you're allowed to just make stuff up? Pretty sure you've gone from essay to guessay there. Akaba, look, your teacher has researched this extensively. I've reached out to everyone I could think of. Whatever information we have now is all that there is to know. This is as much detail as you're ever going to get. Besides, if there really was a political power struggle going on at anything like the level you seem to be suggesting, what hope would we ever have of finding out the truth? Ugh, good point. Okay, back to the drawing board, I guess. Give me some time. I need to find a new angle on this. We have some other stuff to do, so we'll have to say goodbye for now. Good luck with your essay! Alright, thank you. If you find out any more info about all this, please do let me know. Thanks so much. Hey, so, that thing they were talking about, it has to do with the Balladeer, doesn't it? Okay, then, even if we did know something about it, we probably couldn't share it with them, huh? After all, we kicked his butt and got him locked up. Information about people like that is usually super confidential, isn't it? If you ask Paimon, Akaba should just pick a different topic. There must be as many essay topics as there are trees in the forest. There's no point in... Ah! Hey, did you see that? He literally just went by over there. It looked like... like... The Balladeer! No, it can't have been. He got locked up. Oh, quick, let's catch up and see! Behold! Traveler, Paimon, there you are. Nahida! Bad news! We just saw the Balladeer strolling around in public! Did he escape or... Ah! It's him! Hmm. <laughs> sure enough. You're here. Hey! What are you doing in the Sanctuary of Suristana? Aren't you supposed to be locked up? I know you must have a lot of questions. Please, allow me to explain. It was my idea to set the Balladeer free. We made a deal, and he's gonna do some investigation in Ermansoul for me. A deal? Huh. You sure you trust this guy? What did you expect? Why do you think Sumeru would keep me around otherwise? Or maybe killing me is all you can think about. But if that's the case, why haven't you done it already? Don't flatter yourself. It was... Nahida said there's still some mysteries in you to figure out. Ah, so if it were up to you, you'd finish the job? Guess I had you all wrong. There I was thinking you were just getting cold feet. Mm, well, that escalated quickly. Not a good start. Could I ask you all to please calm down? But Paimon's worried about you, Nahida. Don't let him trick you. <laughs> it's not every day you see people questioning the God of Wisdom's judgment. Just when you think you've seen it all. Don't you dare try to drive a wedge between us! As long as the terms are reasonable, I don't think there's a problem in making a deal. Even with the Balladeer. Well, I for one have no reason to doubt you. Considering you even struck a deal with a doctor. Yes. 
one in which I gained valuable information. You'll come to understand more about that in the fullness of time. The Paladir's power was all but completely spent after your battle. He's no longer strong enough to be a strategic threat to us. That puts him in quite a precarious position. Plus, he's a former Harbinger with knowledge of many of the Fatui's sensitive secrets. Being stuck here in Sumeru could make him a sitting duck, depending on how the Fatui plan to respond. Wait a second. Former? You mean, he's not a Harbinger anymore? I take no pleasure in saying this, but... It seems as if the doctor had no intention of welcoming back a loser, so... Sometimes it's you using them, other times it's them using you. Most human relationships are this way. Certainly all the stable ones are. That's how it was between me and the Fatui, and also between each of the Harbingers. So as long as you have some value to offer, Nobody will ever abandon you. But after recent events, even I have to admit that I'm not worth quite what I used to be. <laughs> well, if the Fatui are going to reevaluate my utility, I need to have a backup plan for myself. As we discussed, I don't like causing harm to living beings, and you said you need protection. So, why not join forces with us? I think these two have made their objection to that idea fairly clear, don't you? And they're your friends, so I guess you'll be siding with them. Yeah, obviously! Nahira, don't listen to him! Then let's put that discussion to the side for now. We still have time. Today can be a trial run. Where we go from here will depend on how well we manage to cooperate today. All right, then I'll do what we agreed. Good. Go now, and keep in touch. Nihira, are you... Uh, are you serious about this? Yes. I have my reasons for this decision. In fact, I'm largely doing it for your benefit. Yes. As I told you once before, there's information about your twin in Ermin Soul. Oh, yeah. Actually, that's the whole reason we came to see you today. So, you have an update on that? Mm hmm. You may remember me mentioning that the Fatui had not included your twin's details in the Descender category. This is an extremely important point. It's possible that the Fatui have other information that even I don't know about. And since the Balladeer used to be one of them, he'll be better acquainted with this information than I am. He was granted the power to connect with Erminsoul when he almost became the god of a new era. Even though he no longer has the Gnosis, some traces of its power remain in him. He can still connect. The amount of information in Ermansoul is vast beyond description. Sifting through all of it without knowing what to look for would take too long, even for me. So I asked the Balladeer to search in Ermansoul for any information about the Descenders. He's more familiar with this kind of information, and should be able to find it more quickly. Exactly! Or what if... You... Paima just doesn't trust him! He's treated us as enemies every time we've run into him! I understand. But sometimes, everything is dictated by which side you're on. How things will go in the future depends on what information he brings back. And Traveler, I know what your heart desires most of all. Our minds have connected several times before. There is a corner of your heart reserved for an intense longing. A feeling of being all alone in the dark, searching for the one candle whose light still burns. As Sumeru's deity, it is my responsibility to be on guard against the Balladeer. But as someone who counts you as a friend, I want to do something for you. 
If this deal with the Balladeer can give you the answers you've been longing to find, then it's worth it. It's my pleasure, really. You're Samir's hero. You've more than earned it. Hmm... Paimon's still worried about this idea. Is there anything we can do to help? I was going to contact you about that, but then you suddenly showed up on your own accord. <laughs> Seems like we have a telepathic connection. In fact, I was going to ask you to supervise the Balladeer on my behalf while he carries out the task I assigned. Even though he only has a fraction of his full power left, that's still a fraction of a former Harbinger. If you could accompany him, it would put my mind at ease. Of course, I'll be there to help guide you through Soul from the outside. Great, thank you. Prepare yourselves. I'm going to transport you into Soul. Wow! It looks pretty different here compared to last time. The colors are gentler. Guess that must be because Sumeru's at peace now. Look at that. Hot on my heels. You know, you didn't have to cut your catch up short just to keep me company. Oh, but I guess you panicked when you realized that I might enter Ermin's soul ahead of you. Shut your beak, Jailbird! No way a prisoner gets to be so smug! I understand that prisoners have to put up with harassment from the guards. But right now, I'm on temporary release. So maybe you should think about backing off a little. Sounds like a successful rendezvous. I need to be quite clear about something. In a few moments, you'll be entering into the innermost region of Ermensoul. It is an environment like no other, and the most important place in all of Sumeru. Unlike anywhere else, Ermensoul's inner region consists exclusively of torrents of information. You must put aside your differences and be extremely careful as you navigate your way through. I know there are many grievances between you, on both sides, but it is essential that you remain calm after entry. This is as much for your own safety as anything else. Fine. Let's call it truce. But only until this mission's over. Let's cut each other a little slack, shall we? We are gonna be traveling together after all. Per my agreement with Lesser Lord Kusanali, I'll be at the front. It's my job to lead the way and get rid of any obstacles in our path. All you have to do is keep your pretty eyes open and try not to fall behind. <laughs> you sure are confident. Paimon will give you that. You make it sound like you're even more experienced at adventuring than us. If there are no further objections, I suggest we get going. Or did you need some time to mentally prepare yourselves? Ew! Ugh. The snark on this guy! It's unbearable! <sighs> we can start now. Ermensoul access grid. Initiating connection procedure. Is this a small sapling? Oh, darn it! Come on, let's catch up with him! I pulled a chi-chi